Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest Wood Company. This video's been in the making for a little while and some of you already guessed that we were gonna do this, but we decided to cast our 100,000 subscriber YouTube plaque in resin because that's what we do, we're the Black Forest. In this video, we're gonna actually take you guys through the step-by-step -step process. It actually turned out very good, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Okay, well this has been a couple years in the making for us, you guys. We got this package today from YouTube. Uh, it is our subscriber plaque, our 100,000 subscriber plaque. Okay, all right. Voila. There it is. It's official. Wow. We finally got it. All right, and if you guys haven't guessed by now, yes, we are casting this in epoxy. Well, this is long overdue. It's actually been a couple months, I think, since we filmed the last clip. Um, we just needed some time to enjoy this uh, and actually, you know, just appreciate our award for our 100,000. And we didn't want to make people too mad by casting it right away. Um, I think we're already up to like, what, 116,000 or something like that. So you guys have just been showing tons of support. So for some of the new people, um, we did recently hit 100,000 subscribers and we said that we were gonna cast the YouTube plaque and we're finally ready to do that. So we've got a little mold made here and I'm gonna try and center this as good as I can. I'm not exactly sure the best way to do this, but what we're gonna try and do is we'll just use some of the Acfix fast adhesive. Uh, we'll put that on the back side of this. We'll stick the plaque down. Uh, we'll kind of let that cure and then we'll just go ahead and pour the resin in. Um, my only worry is that there's a possibility that bubbles could come out from underneath. I hope, I'm hoping it doesn't happen. Uh, that back material that's on there too, um, I'll show you guys in a sec, but the back material that's on there is like cloth, so it's quite porous. So there's a chance that that could release bubbles. Um, but our resin does do a really good job at releasing all the bubbles on its own, so hopefully this works. Um, before I lift it up, I'm just gonna take a knife and trace out kind of where it is right now, just make some cuts in that bottom layer that we've already poured. These cuts will get filled in when I pour the next layer over, so I don't really have to worry about them being visible. All right, so we'll get this flipped over, and then I've just got the fast adhesive here. There is a, an accelerator that can kind of speed it up. Um, I'll probably just use this on its own. So I'm staying back from the edges just so that we don't have it squeeze out. Okay, so we've got a situation um, with a fingerprint. No, I don't think it is super glue, but it's not coming out with alcohol. In here right now, you can't really see because we've got a lot of epoxy that's splashed back on the lid, but this is our vacuum chamber and we've got that resin that we just mixed up in there. So another thing that's not working on here is the gauge because we got epoxy on the bottom of there. So we just have to kind of go by time and when we think it should be long enough, uh, but you can kind of see if you look closely. So if you guys have your own degasser, what you're looking for is for uh, the bubbles to rise up to the top, kind of foam up, and then collapse back down. And after they've collapsed back down, you should be good to just release this and pour the epoxy. Okay, so we're gonna try dyeing the resin here. I don't wanna make it too dark, so I've got a transparent red dye. The reason we picked red is because it's a YouTube-themed color. And yeah, YouTube, if you're uh, looking for anybody to up your plaque game, uh, we can start doing this. So here we go. Um, let's hope this works out good. I don't, I don't even think we can capture this on camera, but on the surface of the resin, it kind of looks like the way that oil would look when it's sitting on top of water, um, which makes me kind of believe that there could have possibly been something in or coated on the plaque. 
uh, that's coming off now. And then another thing I'm, I actually just noticed is there's, now we could have done this, but I don't think we did. There's a dent here and a dent here that have only really become obvious once we poured the resin over. Um, so we'll, we'll see if, if anything else changes as this goes. Okay, so it's been, it's been a little over a week now. The plaque is cured. Good news is we didn't really get any dust or any bubbles, nothing weird happened. The only thing that did happen, we had some leakage underneath, which I don't think is gonna be an issue. So let's pop this thing apart and see how it turned out. There's our, our leakage we had underneath, as you guys can see. Um, we got, it looks like, some air bubbles that formed on the back side, but that's the back side, it doesn't matter. The red didn't work at all. I was going for a YouTube red themed pour that did not work. It's just like, salmon colored. yeah, salmon colored. Still doesn't look bad. Um, but yeah, we will get this thing sized up. We'll polish it and yeah. I, I, no real reason behind this, now it's just a plaque and resin. <laughs> We have got our casted plaque all sanded up to 4,000 grit right now. Um, so I'm real quick gonna tell you guys the grits we used. Uh, I started at 120, then 150, 180, 240, 320, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000. So maybe we'll even put something on the screen right now just so you guys can take a screenshot, but that's that's what I found to be the best kind of steps to take when polishing something like this. And as you guys can see, it actually looks pretty good right now, even only being to 4,000 grit. Um, but it, it's actually considerably more hazy than it's going to be when it's finished. So what I've got set up is we've got our mini Max Shine rotary polisher. I've got this whole set up here with a Minzerna product. So I'm gonna start low with like a 300 uh, micron cut and then we'll end up working our way all the way up to 3800 right here uh, and all using that wool pad. Um, so we'll show you guys kind of the first one that I do, the first grit. I'll explain a little bit about what I'm doing and then we'll just set up a time lapse for the rest of it. So take the 300 to begin uh, again, this is a very low grit polishing compound. And then this may sound counterintuitive, but we're actually gonna mix some 2500 with it. Uh, reason being, this will provide more lubrication and just make the polishing process a little easier. Uh, it's still going to be polishing to about a 300 micron uh, grit essentially, um, but this will just give some extra lubrication there. You don't wanna use too much. We'll definitely use more of the 300 than we do of the 2500. Now I'll take the 25, and that's probably good for that. You always wanna start on a low speed with these because if you just go full speed right off the bat, you're gonna send your product flying everywhere. So turn that right down to one. Tap your polisher on there a few times to kind of spread it over the surface. Just start at that low speed of one and spread it out over your entire surface that you're gonna be polishing. So then once you've got full coverage, you can come back, crank this up to about 3,000, 
and just work it in. And I find it actually works quite well to go slow like this and just take your time as you work across. If you have polished a piece like this to such a high shine, uh, you could just leave it as is and that could be your finish, but I do recommend protecting it. Um, this isn't really the kind of project that you would use, let's say, an oil-based finish on. Um, what we like to use is our Black Forest Ceramic uh, base coat first and then we'll follow it up with a coat of top coat. Uh, so this is a nano coating, a really, really thin coating and it's designed actually uh, to go over surfaces like this that have already been finished and polished. Um, originally ceramic coatings were designed for the automotive industry so if you have a, a really fancy sports car with a nice paint job on it that you want to maintain ceramics are a good way to do that so we formulated something that's applicable for epoxy and woodworking and I'll kind of show you guys how it goes on. Some of you may have seen this before but some of you may have not. So take your bottle and take your applicator and the pad and you want to saturate it pretty good and then simply all you do go on your piece. I would start with the perimeter going around the outside and then you just make passes going horizontally first to cover everything and then you'll want to go over it a couple times in the other direction like this and you want to keep repeating this process until you start to feel some resistance in the pad and that's a sign that the ceramic is actually beginning to set up. So once you kind of start to feel that resistance, you know it's time to stop working it in and switch to the microfiber to buff it off. Just starting to feel it now. So now I'm just gonna do some quick passes on the bevels to hit those. And then you wanna take your microfiber and just buff off any excess. So normally I would do all surfaces, you know, edges, back. But today, since we're gonna be handling this, uh, just to get you guys some better lighting for it, I'm gonna hold off on doing the edges, but we'll probably end up doing them after. So let's go take this outside. We'll see if Charlie approves of it. It's very important to know what he thinks, but all in all, I think it turned out not too bad. Well, here it is out in the sunlight. It is very, very bright if you get the right angle on it. Kind of fun doing this one. Definitely took us longer than we were expecting. So thank you guys for being patient. I think we're already at like 120,000 subscribers. Charlie? Do you have any thoughts? Hey, let's see. Yeah, no thoughts really. Um, again, if you guys have any ideas on weird things you want us to cast, let us know. We did the cake, we've done the plaque now. Um, we've seen some comments about other weird things we should, tr we should try. Um, you know what, actually the most liked comment on here with a suggestion of what we should cast, we will do it no matter what. Hopefully I don't regret saying that. Uh, we will cast it, so leave your comment below what you want us to cast, the one with the most likes. We will do it for a video. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next week. Now here's the back side. We didn't show you guys when we were outside, but um, you can see kind of the areas where we glued it down, and there actually is some texture in this bottom layer. We did a smoky gray pour to match the plaque, although you can't tell <laughs> after we poured our, our pinkish salmon layer over top. Um, but yeah, we, we were going for that effect with the red on top, with the gray on the bottom. Did not work. Still looks cool. <laughs> um, we did have to sacrifice our plaque for this, you know, so to pay us back, uh, maybe we need more subscribers so we can get that million subscriber plaque one day. Um, if you can't do that, a like or a comment will suffice. Uh, we will let you guys get by with that. But um, thank you guys for taking the time to watch and let us know what you think. Careful. What do you think? Charlie, be gentle. <laughs>